Uh, good morning, everyone. Am I audible to all of you? Can you please confirm in the chat? Okay, I think I'm audible, guys, to all of you. Uh, yeah, so I think we can start with the session. So uh, today, actually, we'll be uh, learning about this particular object detection on our custom data. So as of now, we have seen how we can perform uh, image classification tasks with the help of TensorFlow and PyTorch, OK? And I have shown you different, different, uh, let's say, example. I also used my custom data there, OK? And I already uh, did that particular transfer learning approach. And we already created uh, that particular notebook and all, right? So in this particular session, we'll be learning this particular object detection. I think you already know what is object detection. I already given you that particular idea, the difference between classification detection and image segmentation, okay, as well as the object tracking. So here we'll be identifying that particular objects in a uh, actually image or in a video you can talk about, okay? Let's say you can consider any kinds of objects. It can be smartphone, it can be your hand gesture and all. Everything you can consider, uh, okay, as an object in this particular, uh, you can say project. So I'll use one particular data set. Uh, the data set name is actually sign language data. Okay, I'm already having this particular data set right now. But if you want to, let's say, uh, build on top of any other data set, you are free, free to do it. I'll tell you why, why, why actually we'll get this kinds of data set, okay? Uh, I mean, it is already annotated data set. But if, if it is not annotated, like how we can also perform the custom annotation and all, everything I'm going to discuss in this particular video, okay? So hope you are uh, you will be watching this particular video till the end. And I'm expecting uh, if you watch uh, till the end, so your most of the route would be clear. And at the end, you will be able to train any kinds of object detection model on top of your custom data. OK, so this is the entire idea. Now, before starting with the session, so first of all, let me show you the dashboard. So this is the dashboard, guys, computer vision hands on. If you have already enrolled for this particular course and it's completely free. Now, if I open it up, so see all the resources, all the materials have been already updated Okay, in the dashboard itself, as you can see. So now if I go to the resources section as well, see resources is also updated. Now, if you're looking for this kinds of resources and videos link and all, so you can enroll this particular course, okay? So go to the Indiron website, even it is already available in the uh, video description. From there also you will get this particular link, okay? So make sure you have enrolled for this particular course and you will get all the materials, all the video from, from uh, this particular dashboard itself, okay? Yeah. All right. So first of all, let me give you the idea. Whenever you are performing, let's say this kind of object detection task, what you have to perform okay, at the very first stage. Okay. So today, actually, I'm going to do object detection. Okay, object detection on custom data. Custom data. So whenever you are doing this kinds of object detection. So first of all, you have to collect the data. Okay, collect data. So it should be based on based on the task you want to perform. Okay, you want to perform. Now here i already told you i'm going to use sign language data because i'm going to detect the sign language let's say if i show any kinds of sign activity so it should detect that particular uh, let's say uh, gesture okay and it will tell me what kinds of activity i'm trying to actually uh, show okay so you can use any kinds of let's say data here you can do let's say vehicle detection smartphone detection okay then uh, path hole detection anything you can perform there are so many object detection tasks actually will get over the internet so the first thing you have to collect the data based on the task you want to perform so here i'm going to perform something called sign okay sign language okay, sign language detection so here i need this kinds of sign language related data okay i'll i'll show you the data how this data will look like so i have already collected this particular data see guys this is the data of the sign language let me just huh. see this is the data of the sign language so here you can see I am having different, different sign gesture. Okay. So let's say if I'm doing like that, that means I'm trying to say hello. Okay. See, this is the hello gesture. Now, hello related image actually I'm having. Okay. So here, if you see, I'm having hello related image. Then I'm also having this kinds of, uh, let's say you want to tell I love you. Okay. So you want to show this particular gesture like that. So this is the rela uh, image related I love you. Now you are also having related uh, this particular no. Okay. Let's see if you're doing like that. So you are trying to say no. 
So that's actually I'm having six different level. Okay, six different level. As you can see, like thanks, yes, and uh, hello. Okay, so these are the things actually I'm having. Now you can uh, consider like as much as sign gesture you can. So there are uh, actually website you can find. So if I search for American, okay, American sign language. Okay, so here you will see different different uh, sign language is there. So you can collect the images with respect to that only. But again, it uh, varies, okay, based on the countries. Let's say if you are building this particular application uh, inside the India, so you will see Indian sign language would be a little bit different, okay, apart from your American sign language. But in this uh, particular uh, like a picture, you can see I have collected the American sign language, okay, gesture. But whenever you are talking about India or let's say other country, so there actually this gesture will be changing. So you need to take care. These are the part as well. See, so this is like I love you. Okay, so you have different different gesture as you can see. Okay, now I think they have also uh, is the sign language or did the original? Uh, yeah, so I saw that there is actually a website, so it is having all different actually sign gesture. Let me show you. Yeah, so sign language. I think here I will get everything. See here. So by referring this particular website, I collected this particular data. Okay, let me show you. Let's say uh, hello. See, this is uh, this is the hello. Okay, this is the hello one. Now this is the thank you. Okay, this is the nice to meet you. Okay, then see you are you are having different different things. Okay, different different things you can uh, see here. Even you can also write here. It will show you the gesture with respect to that. Even they are also having their YouTube video. So by referring the YouTube video, also you can collect these kinds of images. Okay, so yeah. So this is the website. Actually, you can refer. So the website name is www.liveprint.com. Okay, you can refer this particular website if you want to collect these kinds of American sign language detection. Okay, images. I had made a project on a post post detection and uh, square parallel counter app features in the email kit. How can I upgrade the, that projects? Okay, so you created with the help of this particular machine learning, right? So yes, you can uh, like convert this particular project with a deep learning approach. So you can, uh, I think you, you have done the post post detection. Okay, so post detection can be done with the help of YOLO v, V5. Okay, today I'm going to show you this particular YOLO V5. Okay, so YOLO V5, I think post detection supports or not. Let me see guys. Uh, see, instead of YOLO V5, what you can do, you can use something called detect on true. Okay, detect on, detect on true. So this is another uh, amazing framework from Facebook. So with the help of detect on true, you can perform uh, this uh, object detection, uh, then segmentation as well as post detection. See, post estimation, post detection, anything you can perform. So I will suggest go with this particular detect on true. So this is like very powerful, uh, you can say framework. Even it is having a model view. With a different different model architecture. Let me show you. So this is let's say this is the object detection baseline. This is a uh, instance segmentation baseline. This is a uh, key point detection baseline. This is panoptic segmentation baseline, and it is also having post post detection baseline also. Okay, so you can use this particular uh, framework. Okay, if you want to create that particular application. Even I I have this particular uh, uh, things actually in the uh, syllabus so in this particular series i'll be also covering how we can use this particular detect on tool okay on top of the custom data yeah all right so data collection i think you have to do i think you saw that how we can collect the data set so it is av uh, already available over the internet so first of all try to see over the internet whether this kinds of data set is available or not so let's say if you want to like collect this kinds of sign language data so what you can do you can search for sign language Okay, data, Kaggle. So Kaggle is also having this kinds of data. So this is MNIST data, but I don't want the MNIST data. I want uh, American Sign Language finger splitting. Uh, okay, let's see this particular data. So you have to find okay based on your requirement. Uh, you have to see based on your requirement. You you can download the data. Okay, so you can also refer this particular data. Even there is another website called. Roboflow. Okay, let me show you this particular website, Roboflow. So Roboflow is a amazing platform. Actually, they have developed and it can support all the let's say computer vision tasks uh, you'll be performing in future and all. Okay, so you can create an account in the Roboflow. So I already have the account. So let me log into the account. So here actually uh, we can uh, get the data also. You can also train your model. 
you can also annotate your data everything can be done here okay i'll also show you the data annotation part with the help of proboflow in this particular session today okay see guys this is the uh, website of this particular roboflow now roboflow ha uh, having one particular uh, actually a platform called the universe okay so if i go to the universe so universe actually will get all difference uh, all kinds of actually data okay whether it's related to object detection whether it's related to image classification or let's say instance, instance segmentation okay anything data actually will get here so here you can see uh, it is having object detection classification instance segmentation key point detection and semantic segmentation okay and it supports all the model yellow v9 yellow nas okay v8 v5 detectron all the model it supports already okay so you can use this particular platform now let's say you want this particular sign language data okay so you can search for this particular sign language data so sign language if i search here now it will search over the entire university these are the sign language data actually it is also having so based on your requirement you can select the data okay let's say i want to select this particular data i'll click here now you can directly download this particular data okay for this uh, what you have to do now uh, there is a uh, like button called download data set now if i click on the download data set now you can directly download this particular data set as a zip file okay see download as a zip file now you have to select the format okay like which format you want to download this particular data so you have to select the format based on the uh, model you are selecting let's say today i will be using yolo v5 okay yolo v5 model so for this i will be selecting this yolo v5 yolo v5 pytorch so this is the format you have to select then you have to download it okay if you just click on continue it will start download that particular data okay but i'm not going to download this particular data because i'm having my own data that particular data will also show you the annotation and i'll tell you how we can download this particular data and how we can use okay uh, whenever we'll be doing the fine tuning of that particular model fine so it's not like that roboflow is having lots of data okay it is having around as you can see uh see that many of data set actually it is having okay and uh, 350 million uh, images actually we are having and uh, see this is the number of the fine tuning models are available on on the roboflow platform so it's a cool actually website you can refer fine okay so that's how we can collect a different different data so after collecting the data you have to prepare the data prepare prepare the data so whenever i'm talking about prepare the data that means you have to perform something called data annotation data annotation okay data annotation means let's say whenever you are doing this kinds of of uh, uh, this kinds of object detection okay so let's say this is my image so let's say here i'm having one object let's say i'm having one cat let's say this is the cat okay so let's say you want to detect this particular cat first of all you have to annotate this particular object okay let's say i'll create a bounding box okay bounding box and i will assign one level let's say this is a cat okay so that's how actually i have to teach my model okay before passing into the raw image to my model first of all i have to teach my model that means this particular image okay this particular image is the x data that means x x input and this particular level you have assigned okay Th that means this annotation you have done that means this particular bounding box this is your y okay now let's say this is your model so you will give this particular x data as well as the y data that means the label that means the bounding box annotation and your model will predict something okay your model will predict something it will see with with the particular original okay, original y you are having with respect to that it will calculate the loss okay based on the loss it will perform back propagation okay back propagation to the cnn okay convolutional neural network that's how actually it will learn okay it will learn that particular object okay whether it's a cat whether it's a dog or whether it's any kinds of object okay present in that particular image okay so this is the idea so that's why data annotation part is super important task okay in the field of object detection or whether it's a image classification uh, image classification wise i already told you we have to maintain the folder structure and you have to also perform the data annotation in the segmentation task as well okay there we perform polygon annotation i'll tell you what is polygon annotation as well okay yeah fine so once my data preparation is also ready now what i have to do i have to uh, i have to prepare my prepare my model okay for the training for the training so once model preparation is also done i'll start the training start training okay 
So once training is completed, then what I have to do, I have to evaluate that particular model. Evaluate, okay, model. Once evaluation is done, I'll be do the inference, okay? Inference on test data, okay? Then finally, you can create a application. Okay, application. Uh, on real time, you can also create. Second step means you have to prepare the data set. You have to perform the data annotation, okay, Lincoln. I'll tell you the data annotation, how it can be done. So we will be using RoboFlow to do the data annotation, okay? Because I am having the raw images. See, currently I'm having the raw images. So this image, if I give to my model, so my model will get confused what kinds of images I'm providing, okay? Because I want to detect this particular object, okay? This particular hand gesture. set. But my model doesn't know I want to detect this particular hand gesture. So before passing this particular image to my model, I have to annotate this particular part. Okay. Then I will tell my model this is the annotation. This is the actually uh, like point from this particular image I want to I want to detect. Okay. So this is called data annotation. Yeah. So first of all, let's see the data annotation, how it can be done. Okay. So I'm going to use this particular platform called RoboFlow. So I think I already showed you. So you should have one RoboFlow actually account. Okay, so make sure you create a one RoboFlow account. So there, what you have to do, you have to create a new project. Okay, so let's create a new project. So you can give the name. So let's say this is a object, okay. Detection demo live, okay. So this is the name. And here you have to give the annotation group. So if you're not giving the annotation group, it's completely fine. You can skip, but let's give one annotation group. Let's say how many images we are having. We are having six different levels. Okay. Hello. Then uh, I love you. No, please. Then thanks. And uh, yes. Okay. So these are the level actually we are having. So we can give only hello here. Okay. Hello. Now you have to select the task you want to perform. So I already told you it, it supports actually different, different tasks. You can also perform classification, instance segmentation and key point detection. Okay. So I'll, I, I'm doing here object detection task. So first of all, I need to select this particular object detection. Okay. This particular task. Okay. It can also perform different, different tasks. Here. Semantic segmentation you can also perform. So let's select this object detection. Then I'll create this particular project. Okay. Okay. So hello is already used uh, in this particular projects. Okay, so what I can do, I'll go back. First of all, I have to remove some of the project, okay, because there actually I also uh, already use this particular hello guest, sir. Okay, that's why it's coming like that. So let me remove them. So I will delete this particular project. Then I'll also delete this particular project. Okay, sign related, I think I don't have anything. Okay, now I think I can create a new project. Give the name, let's say object detection demo live. Annotation group, let's say hello and select the object detection one and let's create the public project. Now, see, guys, my project has been created. Now you have to drag and drop your image here. Okay, you can either uh, select the folder, I can select the file. Okay, but I'll drag, drag and drop all the images. So I'll press Ctrl A. Okay, and I'll just drag and drop here. So I'm having 30 images here. Okay, 30 images I'm having in this particular folder. But whenever you are training your own model, okay, actual, let, let's say, uh, whenever you want to train your Let's say actual model that time you should have more data. Okay, 30 images won't be working. Uh, I'm also having, see, I already have the data. It is already annotated for me. So let me show you. See, in the train folder, I'm having lots of images. Okay, I'll also share this particular images with you so that you can try. But try to collect, uh, collect your own images, okay, to get a better accuracy because this is my images. Fine. Yeah. So now I already uploaded the data. Now what I have to do, I have to click on save and continue. Okay, now I will start uh, labeling manually. So you can also perform auto labeling. 
you can also uh like i mean uh hire someone from the roboflow team so you have to pay for their them actually if you want to hire them they will do the data annotation for you so you can also see start roboflow rebelly so here you can uh like hire someone you can also manually label your own data okay so i'll be manually my own data because i don't want to take the premium subscription okay so i'll be going with the manual labeling here so i'll click here manual labeling now here i will assign the image now see guys these are the images and i'll start the annotating okay start the annotation okay now what i have to do see i have to annotate this particular object okay let's say i want to detect this particular part okay this is hello okay hello guys sir so for this first of all select the bounding box tool okay right hand side you will, you will see bounding box tool so uh, i'll select this particular bounding box tool now here i will start the annotation see that's how you have to select this particular part and the more correctly you will be selecting the more like you can see your model will be learning okay in a good way so now this is hello i'll just uh, click on save okay it's done now i'll go to the next image now again this is hello i'll annotate i'll click on save enter again i'll go to the next image this is also hello i'll save enter then again i'll take the next image this is also hello that's how you have to complete for all the images actually you are having okay so let's do it quickly now see i love you is coming so i'll select this particular part and this is i love you right now okay so you have to write i love you i love you okay i love you so save enter now again i'll go to the next one so this is also i love you okay the next one this is also i love you next one this is also i love you so i'm doing quickly that's why you can see this annotation is not good but whenever you are doing your own annotation make sure you are doing in a good way okay because i have to complete for all the images that then i can show you like how to save and out okay now this is for no actually so this is no Now this is please. You have to write please here. Yes, annotation need to done manually for each each image. Okay, that's why annotation is like very costly task. But there are some automation actually tools nowadays you can see uh, it can perform auto annotation. But again, you have to manually observe that. Okay, in my YouTube channel, I already created one video. Let me show you uh, how to perform auto image annotation with the help of this particular tool. You can refer this particular video. I think if you want to learn about auto annotation, so here, so here is the auto image annotation. Okay, auto distill. So this tool actually you can use. This is also one tool RoboFlow has developed. Okay, so you can refer this particular video. So this is my YouTube channel. Okay, so I think done for please. Now to also complete. Now this is a uh, thank you. Okay, so this is for thank you gesture. Now this is yes. Yeah, almost done. I'm having only two images. Okay. 
completed. See, all the 28 images, I have completed the annotation. Annotation is about labeling the images and say, uh, setting the bounding box right. Yeah, so you are uh, like correct. So here we are uh, like, uh, you can say locating that particular object. Okay, I want to detect. I'm teaching my model. Okay, so this is the object you want to detect. Okay, my model will learn. Then if I give any test data, then it will be able to identify that particular object. Okay, I want to detect. Now, once it is done, I'll go back. Now see all the image has been annotated. Now I'll add all the image to the data set. Now it will automatically perform the 10 test split for you. You don't need to manually perform it. Okay, now I'll click on the add image. All right, now I'll create a new version. If you want to perform any processing, okay, you can perform otherwise. I will continue. You can also perform the augmentation, data augmentation. If you want to perform, you can also do it. Otherwise, you can continue. Okay, now let's create the data. Okay, now data set is ready. Now you can train with RoboFlow as well. RoboFlow having their own training platform, but again, you have to take their premium subscription. But by default, if you have created free account, you will get some of the credit. So I have two credit left. So I'm not going to train with the RoboFlow. I'll uh, do the Mac custom training. Okay. So here I'm going to export the data set for this. Okay. Now you need to select the format. So I already told you I'm going to use YOLO V5. Okay. YOLO V5. Uh, like you can say model. Okay. So that's why I'm going to use this YOLO V5 PyTorch. Okay. This is the format you have to select. Now you can download this particular data as a zip file. Okay. Now I'll click. Now see it is downloading the data as a zip file. Okay, now it has downloaded. Now if, if I open up my folder, download folder. Now if I just uh, unzip this particular folder, you will see my data is ready. So inside that, see this is the data. Now you can also remove this particular readme and this readme file. It's not required. Now this should be the folder structure. Okay, you can also remove this particular test and valid. No issue. Okay, but this is the final folder structure. So inside images, I'm having all the images, okay? And inside labels, actually, I'm having all the annotation. Okay, see, these are the annotation. Let me open it up. So these are the annotation, okay? So these are the coordinate point of that particular object, okay? You have annotated, and this is the label of that particular object, okay? Now, if you want to see the object names and, and their order, you can also see that. So there is another file it has created called data.yml, okay? Let me open this particular data.yml. See, this is the training testing image location. Number of classes you are having, we are having six classes and all the six classes name. Okay, hello, I love you, no, please, thank, and yes. That means whenever it is predicting zero, that means it is predicting hello because it is following the index order. Whenever it is predicting one, that means it is telling uh, I love you, okay? Then two, three, four, five, that's all, okay? This is the order. You can also remove this part, it's not required, okay? So only this part is required. Okay, now let me close it. Hmm. So this should be the folder structure. Now what you have to do? You have to zip this particular file, okay? You have to make a zip of this particular file and you have to upload inside a GitHub. Okay, let me show you. I already uploaded this data in my GitHub. You can also read the data from the GitHub. You can directly like upload in your, you like, can say uh, Google Colab, okay? Anything you can do, but I already uploaded this data inside my GitHub because so that I can use later on also, okay? You, even you can download from my GitHub also. So let's say I've uploaded. Now there is a, a repository I'm having called branching tutorial. Inside that I'm having this particular data. So sign language zip file. See, this is the data I've already uploaded. Okay. Inside my GitHub repository. Now, if you want to get this particular link, just uh, right click on the view raw and copy the link address. Okay. And this is the complete link of the data. Okay. Now, if you hit this particular URL, it will start the downloading of that particular data. Okay. So this link I I'll, actually I'll be utilizing and I will download this particular data and I'll be training my model on top of it. Okay. Yeah. So this is the data annotation part and data preparation part. Now we have completed, these are the things. Now we can prepare the model, okay, for the training, okay? So I, I already told you I'm going to use something called YOLO v5. So let me show you YOLO v5 official repository. Let me close these are the tab. I think it's not required. So YOLO v5. Yellow V5, if you search over Google, so this is the official GitHub you will get. And this is for Alternatics. Okay, Alternatics, like team has developed this particular Yellow V5 model. And this is not only model, this is also a framework. Okay, see, they have also created a framework. They have also created a GitHub repo on top of it. 
Now, if you want to use this particular YOLO v5, you have to clone this particular repo and you have to set up this particular repo and you can um, like do any, any kinds of task here. Okay. Now, see, you can read about this particular uh, YOLO v5. YOLO v5 is a was, uh, world's most loved vision AI representing uh, alternatives, open source research and for vision AI methods and encompassing development. Okay. So, this is the state of the art model. You can see the model comparison. So YOLO, v, uh, YOLO, YOLO is having different different model variant. YOLO V5 is there, 6 is there, 7 is there, 8 is there, 9 is there. I'll show you on all of them, okay? Because this is in the pipeline. So today I'm showing YOLO V5, tomorrow I'll show V6, then 7, 8, and so on, okay? All the YOLO model I'm going to show you how we can use it, okay? Now, they have also given the tutorial notebook. They have also given the installation guideline, how we can install and all, everything they have given. Now, let's... Below, you will see the model zoo. Okay, this is the model checkpoint. So it is having different different model variant. As you can see, a yellow V5N, that is my, that is the nano model. This is the smallest model. This is the medium model. This is the large model. Okay, this is the X large model. That's how if you go ahead, you will see model size is increasing as well as the inference time is also increasing. Now, let's say I want to get a quick inference. Okay, let's say I want to get a faster inference and I want to take a smaller model. That time I will go with this at the model. Nano is small and medium model. Now, if you want to take a Let's see if you want to achieve a good accuracy. Okay. That time you can go with a bigger model, but their inference time would be increased. Okay. Make sure you are uh, like handling these other things. Okay. Whenever you are doing any kinds of projects. In case we, uh, we are doing augmentation, then science gesture may get different. Let's say if the hello. No, it will apply some of the let's say, augmentation technique. Let's say uh, it will change the image, let's say brightness, image contrast. Okay. Image, let's say, I mean, uh, flip. So that's how actually it will perform the data augmentation. Okay, sometimes it will do the cropping. Okay, it will zoom a little bit. It will zoom out a little bit. Okay, this is the data augmentation task. So in this particular, uh, you can say experiment, I'm going to use this particular model, YOLO V5S model. Okay, I'll tell you how to download this particular model. So you don't need to manually download. Whenever you will be like, let's say hitting the training command at that time, you only just need to define the name. It will automatically get this particular model. Okay. Then I have to change some of the configuration of that particular model. I'll tell you how to do it. All right. So now let's uh, open up that particular notebook. So I already implemented one notebook for you. See, this is the notebook. So in this particular notebook, I have already like written the code, how we are going to do the custom training and all everything is there. I'll share this particular code with you. So you can also try with different, different data. Okay. So you don't need to perform with the sign data. You can also perform with the, any other data set only the changes you have to do. I'll tell you what are the changes you have to do. Okay. And you will get this particular resources in the dashboard itself. And also let me share you this particular notebook link in the chat. If you want to try with me right now, I'll copy the link. And here I'm going to paste it. All right. So the first thing you have to select the GPU. Okay. So let's select the GPU. So change run type type. So I already selected the GPU. Now click on save. Now I'll connect this particular notebook. Okay, my notebook is connected. The first thing I have to clone this particular YOLO V5 repository. Okay, this repository I have to clone. So for this, just click on the code and copy this particular link address and try to paste it here. Okay, git clone I'm doing. And after that, I'm just going inside this particular folder called YOLO V5. Okay, then I will be able to see these are the folders and file. Okay, let me clone and let me show you. See, cloning done. Now if I refresh left hand side, you will see this YOLO V5 has been cloned and all the files and folder I can see right now. Okay. Now what I have to do, I have to install this particular requirements. Okay. All the, let's say requirement packages I have to install. So these are the requirement packages actually you have to install. Okay. Now to install this particular requirements. So first of all, let me change the directory. Um, check the directory currently. Uh, see, I'm inside YOLO V5. That means I'm inside this particular folder. Now I can easily access this particular requirements and I can install. See, this is the command to install the requirements. Okay. After that, I'm just importing some of the library. I'm testing the version of, of it. Okay. Now let me install and let me check.
So once installation is completed, you will be able to see the torch version and CUDA version actually you are using here. Is it available with TensorFlow? No. Okay, if you are using Yellow V5, you have to use PyTorch. Because the repository they have created, they are using PyTorch here. Okay, if you see everywhere, they're using PyTorch, not a TensorFlow. Now, see, installation is completed now. Uh, let me check the directory again. So I inside Yellow V5. Now, what I have to do, I have to download this particular data okay my custom data now i already showed you how to collect this particular url okay i already uh, uploaded my data in my github so this is the github url link okay this is my data link okay this is the data link and i'm using cal command okay cal command cal is a linux command with the help of cal command you can download anything okay from my url so here is the command i'm writing but before that i'm going inside the content directory okay and inside that i'm just downloading this particular zip file okay then i'm unzipping it then I'm removing that particular zip file. Okay, now let me show you my data. So it's done. Now if I refresh, now see it has downloaded my data and all the folders and file I can see. See, I am having all the images. Also, I'm having the labels. Okay, as well as this particular data.yaml. Okay, as you can see. Now you can open up any image also here. So let's open up one image. So this is the hello image. Okay, this is the hello image. Okay, now we are successfully download the data. Okay, you can also manually upload here. You can also manually unzip it. It's up to you. But I have kept as a link so that if you are uh, using my notebook, you can directly get the data. Okay, from this particular URL. Okay, and whenever you will be, let's say, creating end to end application, that time actually uh, you will be downloading the data from a URL or let's say from a let's say S3 bucket or GCP bucket anywhere you can download the data. So I already took a couple of session. Okay, on the end to end implementation, let me show you. If I go to the YouTube, I need on channel. So here, if you go to the playlist, so here I already took lots of end-to-end -end projects. Okay, end-to-end -end object detection project implementation. You can refer this particular playlist. Okay, there I already showed you how to perform the data indexation. Okay, how to perform the data and and then uh, data validation, model trainer, model pusher, everything I have written as a component. Even I already showed you Jenkins CI CD deployment. Okay, there. Okay, you can refer this particular playlist. If you want to in, uh, like uh, learn about end to end implementation okay, of any kinds of object detection project, then you can refer this particular, uh, you can say, uh, playlist. Fine. Okay, now I have to test. Mm, this particular data.yml, like, let's say what are the content actually I'm inside, uh, I, I have inside this particular data.yml. So for this, you can execute one particular command called cat. Okay, cat is a Linux command. If you're uh, like executing cat command on top of any kinds of file, it will show you the content inside that particular file. Okay, now if I open this particular file, so inside that particular file, I'm having these are the content. Okay, now if I want to see that on the Jupyter notebook, I can execute this particular cat command. Okay, cat data.yml. Now you see it is printing all that information inside that particular file okay now i have to define the co model configuration and architecture okay for this see by default by default if you see uh inside yolo v5 i'm having the models okay models and these are the model configuration okay let's say i'll be using this particular model yolo v5 s dot eml model if i open this particular model see this is the model architecture and the, is the model backbone but here if you see nc that means number of classes is equal to 80. why it is 80 because it is trained with Okay, it is trained with something called Coco data. Okay, Coco data. Coco data set. And Coco is a benchmark data set. Okay, benchmark data for object detection. Okay, for object detection. So you can search about Coco data over the internet. And Coco is having 80 number of classes. Okay, 80 number of classes. So this is the Coco website, and here you can see the Coco dataset. Okay, so these are the objects actually, actually it is having. 
So you can also visit their website and you can also see the data set. So actually it is having uh, 80 number of classes. Okay, 80 number of classes. But in this particular example, I'm having only six classes. Okay, let me show you. I'm having only six classes. See, NC parameter is equal to six. That means these are the six classes I'm having. Now what I have to do, first of all, I have to change this particular model configuration. Okay, based on our task, our requirement. Okay, because here we are doing the transfer learning approach. We are picking up that particular pretend model. On top of that, we are just training our own data. The way actually we perform as our image classification task as well. We, I think, you remember we just uh, downloaded the BG16 model. And at the last layer, I think I saw that uh, it was having thousands neuron. Okay, thousands layer. Uh, sorry, thousands neuron. Okay, thousands of like number of classes because it was using ImageNet data set. But here, if you are using object detection model, and object detection model is trained with Coco data set, and Coco data set having 80 number of classes, and that number of classes I have to change with my own classes, which is nothing but six. Okay, so this six parameter I have to set there. So how to set it? So first of all, I have to, I'll be extracting this particular number of classes from the data.yaml file. Okay, for this, I am just using YAML package and I'm loading this particular data.yaml. I'm extracting this particular number of classes. Okay, now see it is six. Okay, it is right now it is six. Okay, now what I have to do? I'll load this particular file, yellow v5sc.yaml. Okay, and I want to see the content inside that. Now see, it is having 80 number of classes. Now I have to change this particular 80 number of classes. Okay, how to do it? So first of all, copy all the content. Okay, copy all the content inside that. Copy everything. Okay, then execute this particular magic cell. Okay, then after that, paste everything here. The content you have copied from that particular file, paste everything here. And instead of writing the number of classes is equal to 80, just give number of classes. Okay, this particular variable because I already collected this number of classes from here. Okay, now this variable will be replaced here. That means it will automatically convert to number of six. Okay. Then after that, I'm just writing this particular file again as a custom underscore yellow v5.yaml. Instead of changing the original file, I'm just creating a copy of this particular file and I'm changing the number of classes. Okay, now let me show you. Now, if I refresh, uh, see now custom. See, this is the file I have created right now. Custom uh, underscore yellow v5s.yaml. See, now it has become nc is equal to six. Previously, it was. Previously, it was 80. Okay, now it has become 6. 80 number of classes means it maximum capacity of detecting objects. Yeah, it can detect 80, 80 number of objects. Okay, 80 number of different, different objects. Okay, if you see in the Coco data, we are having 80 different objects. Okay, but here we are having 6 different objects. In the research scope, in, in is there research scope? In object detection, definitely there are lots of research scope inside object detection. So you can uh, work with this particular algorithm side if you're, let's say, good with the mathematics and all. You can bring up with a different, different, let's say, new, new architecture. Okay, so that it, it would be state of the art. On top of that, you can publish a paper. Otherwise, you can also research on the application level. You can, uh, let's say, this sign language application is already available. If I show you sign language, okay, sign language uh, detection, okay, detection. Paper. Okay, so there are so many people people has published. Okay, with different different approach. So you can also create a best approach, and you can also submit your own paper. See, state of the art approach, sign language detection. So this is the paper they have published. Okay, you can read this particular paper, and you can learn about what kinds of tools and technology they are using. Okay, how they're uh, like uh, coming up with the state of the art solution. Okay, based on that, see they have published the paper. They are also using video camera and all to collect the images. Okay, so that's how we can also. Build this particular system in an efficient way. You can get a higher accuracy. That time you can also publish a paper on top of it. Okay, that is also possible. So there are definitely lots of uh, research scope you will see inside the object detection. Okay, I think Monica, you are asking this particular question. All right, so now we have successfully changed the model configuration. Now we can start the training part. Okay, we can start a training part. Now to start the training, uh, here is the training command. Okay, so first of all, you have to go inside yellow v5 folder. And inside that you have one file called train.py. Let me show you. So this is the file called train.py. Now if I open this particular file, so this file contains all the code related training. Okay, you don't need to write manually. So everything they have already written. So that's why I personally love this particular yellow v5 because everything is already available. I just need to plug in my data and everything I can run okay from this particular notebook and it will work for me. So I don't need to manually set up everything. Okay, everything can be automated. See, all the code they have already written. So you don't need to like modify this particular code. Okay, just keep it as like that. 
only you just need to set some argument. Okay, see, first of all, you have to define the image resolution. Okay, image size. So if you check my image size, so it's like, uh, let me show you the image size. So if I go to the properties, details, so this is the resolution, okay? 640 uh, times 480, okay? That's why I kept this particular size. Okay, 460, okay, 416. But let's say if you're having HD image at the time, you can also keep uh, 1080, okay? 1080, you can also keep, okay? Otherwise, you can also keep uh, 7, uh, 720, you can also keep, okay? That's how you can see, uh, give the image size. Then you can define the batch size, okay? Like number of batches actually, it will take the image during training. And number of epoch, let's train uh, 100 epoch, okay? I'll train 100 epoch just to get a good performance from the model. But 100 epoch is not enough. You have to increase this particular epoch size. Then I, I need to give the data.yaml location, okay? So this is the data.yaml location because inside data.yaml, I'm having all the folder location where, where my data set is present, okay? Number of classes I'm having and all the classes name. So this particular location you have to give, so copy the path and give it here, okay? Then you have to give the model configuration, the model configuration we have created. So it is inside yellow V5 models and we have created this particular custom uh, underscore yellow V5 YAML. So copy this particular path and give it here. That's it, okay? So once it is done, you have to also give the model name, which model you want to use. So I already told you, I'm going to use this particular yellow V5 S.PT model and it is already available in the model view. So copy the name, okay? And give it here and just add .pt, okay? It will automatically download. Then uh, what would be the output folder? There actually it will uh, like save my model and it will save the artifacts and all, like all the laws and matrices I can see in this particular folder. Now, once it is done, now let's start the training. Now, first of all, it will download the base model, then it will load that particular model and it will train on top of my data. You can uh, open the Coco website, link and you can see all the like images, okay, available inside Coco dataset. Now see guys, training is going on. So Epoch has started. So currently it's zero Epoch is running. So it will take some time, let's wait, okay? So if you are using premium collapse, it will, uh, training will happen quickly. And this is the box losses, classes losses, and MAP score you can see. If MAP score is increasing, that means your model is learning. If his lo loss is decreasing, that means your model is learning, okay? So if you have any kinds of query in between, you can ask me. So training is going on, let's wait. So currently 34 epochs out of 100. So let's wait. And see left hand side, it has created one runs folder, okay? Inside runs folder, it is saving all the logs. So yellow V5 results and see, this is my final model, base.pt. And these are the logs, okay? That means uh, my uh, result.csv, then conversion matrix, I'll tell you, okay? I'll uh, show you all the graphs and all. First of all, let training be completed. Should we learn uh, V5, V7, other YOLO um, updates? Yeah, definitely we should learn. And tomorrow I'll uh, show you the YOLO V6, okay? Then after tomorrow, V7, 8, and 9. Because 9 is the current version, okay, of the YOLO.
Okay, 81. In 20 more epochs is remaining. Let's wait. Okay, my 100 epochs is completed. Now I got my final MAP score as you can see. And all the MAP score are close together. That means everything is running. All the classes is running fine. Okay. Now also let me uh, evaluate the model. First of all, I will launch the tensor board and I will see all the logs. Okay, different, different logs, all the metrics and everything I can see from here also. Now it will launch the tensor board. See, this is my tensor board and here you can see uh, your f1 curve this is the f1 curve this is the precision curve this is the recall curve okay then you can also see the matrices that means the results okay but it's it's like very smaller graph so i can also launch in a bigger graph so let me also do it so this is the code you can execute. So it is having one result.png file inside train folder, yellow v5s, see results.png. So inside that it has saved all the, okay, all the matrices, okay, in a graphical representation. Now let me show you. This is the final metric you can refer. So this is my training box loss. That means if in epoxy is increasing, my loss is also decreasing. Again, training box loss, epoxy is increasing, loss is decreasing, loss is decreasing, okay. Then MAP score, precision recall is increasing. Okay, if epoxy is increasing, precision recall is also increasing, MAP score is also increasing. Okay, that means this uh, six uh, graph, it should be like you can say uh, decreasing. Okay, so this loss should be decreasing always, and MAP and precision recall, okay, it should be increasing. And if you look this kinds of graph, that means your model is learning better. See, initially it was some zigzag issue because initially it was. Uh, like doing some random images and it was uh, like learning, it was trying to learn. That's why you can see some zigzag issue. But once my model got actually after 50 epochs, okay, see the learning was pretty good here. Okay, so that's how you can actually evaluate your model, whether your model is learning better or not. Okay, if, if model is not learning that time, you will see this MAP is not increasing, even loss is not decreasing. Okay, it would be a saturation point that time. Okay, so this is the metric you can see. Now you can also see some batch images like ground truth images okay like how my image will look like even also you can see some batch images okay these are the batch images and see yolo v5 by default it will perform data augmentation technique okay in the back end see now it has performed data augmentation also with my different different image see sometimes it has changed the brightness sometimes it has changed the color of my image okay sometimes it has combined all the four images together okay this is called data augmentation Okay, and by default, YOLO v5 will apply this thing in the runtime itself. Okay, yeah. Now, after that, I'll uh, see my model. So, model is available inside this particular runs folder, train YOLO v5s, and wait. Okay, inside wait, this is my model, base.pt. So, this is my final model. Okay, this model actually I have trained. Now, you can also download this particular model. If you want to create any web application, you can use this particular model. Okay, in future. Now, uh, let, let's say if you want to learn how to create the web application, you can refer this particular playlist. Okay, I already showed you this playlist. You can refer there. I showed you how we can create the web application and how we can convert this project as an end to end pipeline. Okay, everything I have already explained here. Now, what I have to do, I'll be performing some detect. Okay, on top of my test image. Now, I think you remember I am having some test image. So, inside test folder, I'm having some testing image. Okay, now, now let's test my model on top of my testing image. Okay, so for this. I'll be executing this particular command, okay, called detect.py inside yellow v5. I'm having this particular file called detect.py. So this is the file called detect.py. And they have already written the code about detect.py, like how it will detect, how it will load the model, everything they have written. Okay, so no need to change anything. Only you just need to specify some of the parameter. So the first parameter you have to give the model name. Okay, the model you want to use. So this is the model I want to use. So this model is available in the runs folder, inside train folder, inside yellow v5 
inside wait okay inside wait i'm having this particular model called base.pt so copy the path and mention it here mention it here okay then you need to give the same image size i have given in the training okay like 4 16 then confidence score like you want to train your model if you if like you confident about 50 percent this image is a let's say hello or any other object that time you can show otherwise you don't need to show okay this is the confidence score you can set and source is equal to test data okay so as you can see this is my test data this is my test data location image for that so this is the location actually i'm giving now it will pick all the images one by one and it will predict and it will save inside the trans folder okay now let me execute and show you so it has performed all the testing now if you want to visualize the image so what you can do you can go inside yolo v5 refresh and go inside runs folder there is a folder you will see called detect inside that you see the experiment now see this is your detection okay now if i open the hello now see guys it has detected hello with the confidence score of 0 0.90 it is 90 percent confidence this object is a hello now let's open any other image let's say i love you see it is 81 percent confidence this image is i love you now also let's open the no it is 74 percent confident this is a no okay no gesture then i'll also open up for the please now see it is 92 percent confidence you are trying to say please then i'll also open up for the thanks so it is uh 88 percent confidence you are trying to say thanks then also yes that means all the level it is predicting successfully guys see it is 91 percent confidence you are trying to say yes here okay that means it is performing very well okay although i trained only 100 epoch but you will see the confidence score is like very high okay very high although i said 50 50 percent confidence i was telling my model if you are 50 percent confident uh if you're predicting correct that time show otherwise don't no need to show but i saw that it is more than 50 percent okay 50 percent correct it is predicting everything okay now what you can do you can also perform on top of the real web camera so you can also launch up your web camera there actually you can also show the hand gesture it will also detect in a real time it is also possible and if you want to learn it so please refer this particular series so at the last series i think last session so you can follow this particular session or user app okay user app so here i was discussing about how we can um, like load the model and how we can also load our web camera and with the help of web camera how we can also do the real time prediction okay there actually i already discussed this part you can refer this particular lecture okay so that's how actually we can train any kinds of object detection model okay with the help of yolo v5 on top of the custom data okay now you can use any kinds of data from the roboflow universe so let me go to the universe so here you are having different different data so let's say you want to perform object detection so select the object detection now see guys these are the data set you are having for the object detection so you are having facial expression data fish data then you are having uh, this particular data okay booster data then animal data basketball data okay face data you can pick up any kinds of data and you can train the object detection model on top of that okay so i'll give you a uh, one task actually so pick up any kinds of data set from the RoboFlow and try to train one object detection model on top of it okay so this should be your task so please try to explore this particular task and if you are able to do it so definitely you can train any kinds of object detection model okay with the help of yolo v5 and this is like very easy to use framework okay over the internet how to detect from a video so you have to execute the same command only you just need to give the source is equal to zero here let me show you in the detect detect command you are running now here but it should be running on your local machine okay collab it, it won't be working because collab can't access your web camera so make sure you are running from the local machine so this source is equal to you have to give zero zero means the camera id okay it will launch up your web camera that time so in this particular video i already discussed this part this video you can check it out okay so fine guys i think uh the session was good and you were uh you were able to learn these are the things actually how we can perform uh, custom object detection on top of our custom data set okay so tomorrow i'm going to uh, show you the yolo v v6 one okay like how we can use yolo v6 so if you already know yolo v5 yolo v6 is like slightly different okay all the things would be remain same only uh, some of the functionality would be slightly different okay i'll tell you okay how to uh, set up and all i'll tell you each and everything okay 
so with that guys uh, i can i think end the session for today so let's connect tomorrow and try to learn the yolo v6 as well okay for the object detection so thank you so much guys for joining the session uh, bye everyone take care bye thank you everyone